whether acoustic, upright, electric, or whatever, how in the world do you write an interesting bass line? What are some tips to make that bass come alive and not just live on the root? Hey there, welcome back to Music Theater Sound Lab, where we talk about all facets of writing and producing great theater music, like a music producer. I'm Joanna Burns. I'm a composer, singer, songwriter, and sometime actor, full-time lover of soft pants, clear umbrellas, and Janine Tesori. Today we're diving into the world of the bass, the bass, the bass. Whether acoustic, upright, electric, or whatever, how in the world do you write an interesting bass line? What are some tips to make that bass come alive and not just live on the root? Let me begin by saying I love the bass. I do not play the bass, though I have always imagined myself on stage at some point laying down an awesome rhythm part. That dream has so far remained exactly there in my imagination. Though I do technically own one, I'm pretty terrible at executing almost anything on it, but my heart and my ears play the bass and that's what counts. Without having studied this particular stuff in school, a few things that always help me when I'm trying to write for really any instrument that I don't play is to watch clips of people playing the thing I have questions about. I try to watch and listen in pursuit of the answers to a few questions. How does this instrument typically function, whether solo or in a group? Meaning, what's its role? Logistically speaking, what is the range of the instrument and where does it achieve certain timbres? And then, what does the player look like when they're playing, as in, how do they move? These questions have gotten me pretty deep into part writing from a very living, hands-on place. And we love that here at Music Theater Sound Lab. So having done that many times, let me share a few points of how I personally think about the bass. When it's playing in a group, it's part of the rhythm section. It often syncs with the kick drum in a drum set. It often keeps a driving pulse if the song drives. It often covers the roots of the chords. And when it moves between chord tones, it often transitions on the fourth, fifth, or octave of the chord. These are the most neutral tones in any chord, just in the sense that they don't decide major or minor or upper extensions of the chords for those who get me on that. And lastly, when playing solo, it can become much more melodic and occupy a lot more of the upper register since it's no longer bound to the task of carrying the low end of the arrangement. A few bonus ideas that are important to me as far as just my own personal taste is that I aim for a warm sound. By this, I mean that I don't really like a nasal high end kind of sound. A Fender P bass is my absolute favorite. Actually, here's what I would qualify as a more nasal bright bass sound. Here's what I might call a warmer bass sound. I want my bass lines to be logical, economical, less notes is better, always. In the pocket, and if it's not dancing with the main melody, then I only want it to pull melodic focus when there's a clearing in the music to do so. Now for the bassists out there, yes, there's clearly so much more to know. Feel free to be like, um, Joanna, actually there's this and there's this and there's that. But at least this will just get us thinking on the right track, right? Let's just try this out. Let's write a bass part and think about these things while we work, and then we can double back and check if we're hitting our mark. Let's dive into Logic Pro. I'm gonna pull up one of Logic's loops just to get us going here. I think the one that I liked was called Mysterious Funk Beat. I had that selected as a favorite. I'm gonna drag that over to the beginning of my session. These loops are great for inspiration. I personally don't like to use them without chopping them up or affecting them in some way, especially for musical theater because I'm looking to get as much specificity as possible. The loops leave some room for variation, but really I like to write my own drum parts and I want them to interact with my bass lines as uniquely as possible, telling whatever unique story I'm telling, but I digress. So I'm gonna close this up and I just wanna show you the sound that I like. This is from the Trillion Library. This is called Retro 60s Full Range. And it's one of the warmer sounds that they have in that library. Closing that. So let's hear our actual groove. Oh yes. Very Whitney, giving me Whitney, giving me all, frankly, all Whitney. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with Whitney. I'm gonna loop this out. If I hold up here, I can drag out and create a ton of repetitions of this. I don't know how long I want it to be, so I'm just gonna make it like very long. And we'll cut it once we're done. I'm also noticing that there's sort of a pitched sound in the groove, so I'm gonna see if I can take that into account. Bop, bop. G sharp. So I'm gonna choose to put my bass line in the key of E because that will jive with my pitched percussion. Let me listen to my kick pattern. Do, 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 do
Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, that's a, that's something. Let's try this. I'm going to do some more. I'm going to loop out some more until I find something that I like. One, six. Doom, 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 doom. I've been playing with this one chord progression. I think I'm going to switch it. Try to make like verse sections and chorus sections and divide it up. Alrighty, there's something. Let's hear that again. Go down a summarized version of a kind of get you started checklist. First, I'm going to quantize it a bit just to like tighten it up because this was just like a freestyle. So I'm quantizing by 78% to the 16th note. Let's listen to this whole thing straight through. be the judge. I don't have to judge my own stuff. You let me know what you think. I guess that's it. God, I love the bass. So that's just a quick pass through how I like to think about things. Did I do what I set out to do? Did I check all the boxes? Either way, we may have the makings of a new song on our hands here. So I'll leave the MIDI file and the loop info in the description for download if you're curious to take a look or play with it at all. If you do, please share it with me. I want to hear what you're making. Anyway, I hope that any of that could be helpful to you. Please feel free to chime in with any questions or perspectives in the comments below. And if you're not already part of the tribe, hit that subscribe button for more insights into the intersection of musical theater, music production, and songwriting. Bye-bye. <laughs>